us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise, O oh God, and we give you all the glory, Lord, because you are worthy of it and more, O oh God. Father God, we exalt you and we honor you and we thank you, God, because we know that it's because of Jesus Christ that makes all of this possible, O oh God. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us, oh God, that has brought us near to you. And this morning, we just want to praise you and we want to exalt you and we want to give you all the glory. Humble me now, Lord God, that you alone and your name alone will be exalted and glorified. Even now, oh God, prepare every heart, my God, that will hear from you, oh God. Lord God, let your word go forth without hindrance, oh God. Let it go forth with power and authority, oh God, that every heart that hears, my God, will never be the same. Father God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. May you continue to encamp around us, oh God. May your angels even now be around us as walls of fire, oh God. And let your peace always be upon us, the peace that passeth all understanding. Let it rest, let it remain. Let it abide with us in the name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. The spoken word this morning is be separated. Be separated. And when I looked up separated, it says it means to set or keep apart, to disconnect, to sever. And as I was preparing for this, this message, there was a word that came to me that says that God is looking for a people to come in agreement, in alignment with all that he has in store for them. And I looked up a word that attested that in Ephesians 1, 3 to 6. It said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us as adoptions as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in his beloved. Mm -hmm. And we know that is true because there's another scripture that says, for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have ever everlasting life. But what God showed me was that as he is looking for a people to accept his son and walk in the blessings and the victory that Jesus Christ purchased for us, he said the devil is looking for a people that he can use to prevent us from experiencing the blessings of God. Because John 10, 10 tells us, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy all that God has for us. So then when I was thinking about all of this, he brought to me back to the beginning in the Garden of Eden. And he was playing the whole scenario with Adam and Eve before me. And he showed me that when I created Adam and Eve, I blessed them. They were blessed because why? I blessed them with life. I blessed them with everything that was good and they were in my presence. They could freely come into my presence. There was nothing that was hindering them from being in my presence. And he said the only requirement I had for them, for this to continue, was that they had access to all that I had, everything I had in the garden was there. My only requirement was that one tree that you see there, I don't want you to touch it. I don't want you to look at it. Keep away from it. If you can do that, then everything will be well with you. And the word of God said that the enemy came. And this is, this is what I want us to, 
to focus on today. Be separated because you see the thing is, God has saved us with a mighty right hand, right? When Adam and Eve fell, because we know what happened in the garden of Eden, the devil came and used the serpent and said to the woman, did God really tell you that you shouldn't touch it? And if you touch it in the day you do it, you will die. And she said, yes, God said that. And the serpent said, but you won't die. Does that sound familiar? We're living in a world right now where compromise is the name of the game. Compromise. God says, don't do this. But the devil says, no, but it's okay to do this. And as children of God, God is expecting his people to be separated. If we who were in darkness have been called into a marvelous light, why do we want to still identify with the darkness? You see, this is, it's like the Garden of Eden is being played over again. Because here's what happened. After man fell and we know they fell, Jesus Christ came and he gave us back everything that we lost out on in the Garden of Eden. So now we're living in the world and we're in this world and when we have Jesus Christ, this is what we have again. We have life, we have victory, and we have the presence of God. But here what happens now, we're still alive in this world and who controls this world? Who is the one who controls all the activities in this world? And if we are living in this world, and we're not trying to be separated from this world. I'm here to tell you that the same thing that went down in the Garden of Eden is going to happen again. The same thing that happened to Adam and Eve. Because you have to think about it. We are now in the presence of God. We now have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are no longer death candidates because we have life. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. We are still in this world. And we have an enemy that is looking for ways to destroy us. So what are we going to do? Are we going to make it easy for him? Are we going to act as if we don't know who we are in Christ Jesus? And that's what God is saying today. That we have to be separate. 1 John 2, 15 to 17, it says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. It says, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the love, the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of this world. And the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Amen. It is the word of God. Amen. So as children of God who has been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, that's the thing. We take this salvation so lightly. We take it like it's an ordinary thing. Like blood wasn't shed. Like a great God didn't have to take on our sinful nature and go to an old rugged cross. And because he did that, what are we doing with it? Are we allowing the enemy to keep us in a place where God didn't have for us. The word of God said we are a chosen nation, a royal priesthood, a holy people of God. So if God is saying all of that about us, how can we compromise with the things of the world? You have to understand. You have to understand. It's no different than with Adam and Eve right now because we have Jesus. Jesus has reconciled us back to God. So everything that we lost out of, we have it now. But here's the thing, the devil thinks it's still up for grabs. So he's going to use things to tempt us. He's going to use situations to entice us. He's looking for ways for you to not do what God says. And what's the purpose of to steal, 
to destroy, to put you in a place where you'll be like Adam and Eve. They had to hide from the presence of God. When they went against what God said, you have to wake up and understand that if you understand the mystery of salvation, if you understand that blood was shed and that God allowed his chosen people to reject him so that he can have mercy on all. If you understand that when you witness to someone who don't know Jesus and they look at you like you're crazy, if you understand that, why would you compromise? Why wouldn't you be separated? Why wouldn't you do everything in your power to make sure your ways please God. Amen, amen, amen. This is what it's about, saints of God. Yeah. It's being in agreement, in alignment, in covenant with what God says. Yeah. God is looking for a people like that. Because if you can be in agreement with God, whatever you say, God, I'm gonna do. Think about it. Let's talk, let's let's talk about it. Some of us we have rent contracts, right? We have mortgage contracts. And we have car payments. If we miss our mortgage payment and our car payment, what's going to happen? They're going to take the house and they're going to take the car. And these are natural things, things that don't matter. And the things of God that we shouldn't compromise on, the things of God that supersedes everything on this earth, those are the things we just we take it as simple. We have to understand. I use the mortgage and the car for you guys to understand that how we are committed to pay our mortgage because we don't want to be homeless. And now we committed to pay our cars because we don't want to walk. We should have a bigger commitment for our souls because blood was shed. Jesus said that. God said that I have already blessed with every spiritual blessing yeah. in the heavenly places. But I'm here to tell you that you can't tap into that if you're not in agreement with what God says. You gotta come into agreement with what God has said in his word and live a life that brings glory to God. Yeah. That means some people you're gonna have to put them yeah. on the back burner. Yes. Yes. There's some places you can't go no more. There's some things you can't watch anymore because you understand what God has done to redeem you. It is the truth and this is what it is. We have to be serious. Just as I'm serious to keep the things in the natural that profits us nothing. That the word of God said it can rust. It can moth. Yes. It can blow away by hurricane. Mm. It can, you have to understand. You can lose it in a minute. You can lose it in a minute. Mm. But the things that are spiritual, yes. the things that come yes. from yes. Almighty yes. God, they are irrevocable. Yes. They cannot be taken away. Yes. But it is for us to come yes. in alignment. Yes, we have to. You have to. You see, the devil cool. is in alignment mm. with destroying us. He is in alignment to do everything in his power, to use people, to use situation, to get us to go against what oh, God yeah. says. Right. And we make it easy because we say, God understands. God understands that I'm not perfect. God understands all this nonsense. But today God wants us to be separated. He wants us to take a stand for what is right. Amen. I'm going to go to the word of God. Because this word, when God was showing me in 2 Corinthians 6, and I'm going to be going through verse 14 to 16. Hear what the word of God says. Verse 14 says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. It's the word of God. Because you see what happens is, once you come into the knowledge of yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. It's different when you don't know God. Yes. It's different yes. when both of us are in darkness. Yes. You understand? Yes. You are in darkness yes. and I'm in darkness. Yes. So together we're in darkness together. Yes. But you see when Jesus Christ. 
touch down and call you and knock on the door of your heart and he pulls you out of that darkness and he pushes you up and he clothes you in your right mind so you know the difference between right and wrong when God does that for you you cannot be unequally yoked you cannot now go see does it sound like it makes sense to you you know all your life you can't see think about it think about a blind think about your blind close your eyes and all your life you're walking and you can't see and you have people around you that then can't see either you're walking together then God shows up with this miracle and he opens up your eyes that you can see my God way beyond the natural you're seeing everything you want to know go join back in darkness with the blind you have to understand that is what we do when we come into the knowledge of God but we still want to associate with the darkness that sounds like rubbish how can you get the truth of Jesus Christ and under listen if you don't get the truth it's different but if you receive the truth and your eyes have been opened and your understanding has been opened and now you can see there is no way you would want to be joined or seek out people that are not in the alignment with you you can't be talking to them for advice you have to understand you gotta be radical when you come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ people who are not spiritually in tuned like you are you can't go to them for advice because the devil will use them to give you the right advice to send you down a path that God does not intend for you you have to understand we have to take our salvation serious this is what the separation means it means that if I was walking this way and God is now telling me no you gotta go that way I gotta go where God is telling me to go because it is we are in a fight for our lives and we take it so easily like it's oh oh yes I went to church today no we're at war and the number one thing is to prevent us from living this abundant life the word of God said the devil comes to kill to steal and to destroy but Jesus said but I come to give your life and to give your life more abundantly the devil doesn't want us to enjoy abundant life so he puts things in our path to entice us to make us think it's okay God understands you know you have you can ask for forgiveness listen to me saints of God if we understand what it means he said do not be unequally out simple. it's simple. simple you don't have to put any comma yes you don't have to put uh-huh. anything else uh-huh. it is period right. whatever God says remember God is looking for a people yeah. to come in alignment with yes. him yeah. That's what he's seeking. He's seeking people who are going to come into covenant. Yeah. Yeah. When you're in covenant with God, you know, it's no, you don't put any commas mm. when he says something. When he says it, it's business and you're going to do it. That is what God is yeah. looking for. So are we going to go according to what God wants? Or are we going to continue? I'm going to touch on another story to show you. In the children of Israel era, God told them they shouldn't be unequally yoked. He said, when I take you out of Egypt, do not align with people who don't know me. Why do you think God says that? Because they are going to take you away from me. You see, that's not what happened. When you align yourself with somebody who is darkness, trust me, that darkness will overpower you. Because pretty soon, you're going to start compromising on what God says. And before you know it, you're back in darkness. And that is what God is trying to prevent us from happening. That's why he's telling us. That's why we should just be in agreement with what he said. So the children of Israel, if you know the story, went on and on. But in Ezra, Ezra 9, read it when you go home. After the children of Israel came out of captivity from Babylon, 
the word of God said that mm -hmm. a lot of them, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a lot of them <coughs> had pagan mm -hmm. wives. Mm -hmm. The Levites, no, the Levites were the priests. Mm -hmm. How can the priests have pagan wives? All of them mm -hmm. had pagan wives, wow. meaning they did not serve. The yeah, true and living God. Yeah. And when Ezra got wind of it, the word of God said the man fell on his face mm -hmm. in sackcloth and ashes and fasting and trembling before the God of heaven because he understood that God said you should not intermarry with people who are unbelievers because it comes with a penalty. And when they heard this, they said, this is why we're suffering, God. This is why we're still under curse. Because we're not walking in alignment with your word. Yes. And the word of God said, all Israel came before God. Yes, yes, yes. And they all fell trembling. Yes. Yes. You see, that's the problem with the church today. They don't have a holy fear of God. There's no reverence for God. They don't know who God is. So they against the word of God and there is nothing, there is no fear, my God the word of God said they were afraid yes. because they understood yes. they knew the God of heaven yes. they knew the fact that they went against yes. the ordinance of God yes. Yes. and they said this is what we'll do God I want to tell you, you see, yes. you, you gotta read yes. the word of God read the word of God because God is the same yesterday today and forever the grace message is being abused so that people think that God changed and that his standards change and his laws change Jesus said I came to fulfill the law I didn't come to change it the people when they gathered in trembling before God at the temple at the entrance of the temple and their faces were down to the earth because they didn't even want to look up at God. That's how much reverence mm. they have for God. Yes. The word of God said they all decided. Yes. I'm going to tell you this. Yes. They were married. Yes. Daughters married pagan men. Mm -hmm. Sons married pagan women. Mm -hmm. They had pagan children. Mm -hmm. Moses, when he told them mm -hmm. not to do this, he said, because you don't want to mix up the Holy Spirit. You understand because when you mix it now you have mixed things coming forth because they're pagan they don't believe in the true and living God they sacrifice the idols so you're bringing curse into Israel when Israel is the chosen people of God spiritual ramifications but hear what all the people said they said we will separate ourselves oh my god they said, we will separate ourselves from our dog, from our wives and our husbands and our children. We will separate ourselves and we will do as God has ordained us to do. How many of us would do that? We struggle with the little things that God is telling us. These people understood the spiritual ramification. Because they love God. Because they love God. You see what I'm saying? It's the love of God. That is what's missing from the world. The respect and adoration for God. Then what did Moses tell them? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. He said, write it on the doorpost, on the front legs. They understood what the law of God was. So when they realized that they defied what God said, they separated themselves. Mm -hmm. Get rid of them. They got rid of them. <laughs> you have to understand. They turned their backs Jesus. on what 
they created because they knew that that wasn't in alignment with God. That's why Jesus said that in any man in Christ, you're a new creation. All things are past. He said, you got to be born again. So people who are saying all this nonsense, this is how I was born. Jesus Christ said, you got to be born again. Amen. 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 Go back. Separate yourself from the things that are going to hinder you from living what God has ordained for you to live. God is looking for a people to come into agreement. He's looking for a people to come into a... If we can do that, we will live victorious lives. If Adam and Eve could have just stayed in agreement, could have stayed in covenant with God, none of this would be here. But sin is here, and this is what it is. Mm -hmm. But Jesus Christ has given us victory. Mm -hmm. So are we going to keep letting the enemy kill, steal, and destroy? Are we going to just let it be easy? Or are we just going to say no? Mm -hmm. God says, I should not be unequally yoked. So we're going to move on. and I'm, gonna, I'm telling you, this word is powerful. When God was showing me this word, he said, For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? You see, you have to understand that all the tall call mm -hmm. of being a chosen vessel of God. Oh, that's it. That's the thing. You have to understand that's it. that we are not ordinary people. If it was ordinary, it wouldn't cost so much. That's it. That's it. If it was ordinary, it wouldn't cost as much as it did. So because it costs so dearly, when God says, what? Fellowship. Yes. What fellowship mm -hmm. has righteousness mm -hmm. with lawlessness? Mm -hmm. And if you go to Psalms 1 to 3, it says, The blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seats of the scornful, but his delight is in the law, in the law <laughs> of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates. Day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The devil don't want you to prosper. He don't want you to be planted by rivers of water. This is why he keeps telling you things for you to compromise, because every time you're Compromise. Mm -hmm. It's hurting us. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? When we don't come in agreement with what God says, yeah. oh, we can't say we're going to be trees planted by the river. No, we're going to be like shafts being yes. blown away, That's like right. the wicked. That's right. That's it. We have to understand mm -hmm. what we are dealing with. That it started in the Garden of Eden and it will continue until Jesus Christ establishes his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So we have to do our part. Jesus already reconciled us back to God. Amen. Jesus Christ paid the price with his blood. So now we who are benefactors of that sacrifice need to get it together. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4, 17 to 19 says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, but in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. How can we want to align with people who are in darkness? That is crazy. Mm. The word of God says, who being, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work on cleanness with greediness. Mm. What fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? Mm. And then the word continued to say, and what communion mm. has light? Mm. With the, you have to understand this word. You gotta let this word speak to your spirit. You gotta, you gotta feed on this word. Jesus says in Matthew 5 14 that you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor they do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it gives. 
gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. If we have the light but we want to compromise, you ever see a light that's half on and half off? I've never seen that. Have you, can you turn the light half on and half off? So that means you can't be half in darkness and half in light. Nothing goes like that. You're either all for darkness or you're all for light. There's no compromising. This is why God is looking for a people who are resolute to be children of light. You have to understand the word of God says that we were once in darkness. That's Ephesians 5.11. It says, but now you are in the in the now you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. He said, finding out what is acceptable for, for the Lord. Hear what happened now. It says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. That is our duty, that is our requirement as children of light. We're not supposed to be one with darkness. We're supposed to expose the darkness. And the way we live our lives should be a testament that brings glory to God so people can look at you and say, what is it that is different about you? Why do you walk like that? Why do you talk like that? Why do you operate like that? It is the light. This is what God requires of his people. So if we understand the mystery that we were in darkness, alienated from the family of God with no hope and have been saved by grace and brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ, then why do we still come over the darkness? Hmm. The darkness is always going to try to pursue us. Yeah. But it is for us to reject oh, the darkness yes, because we are children of light. We are not children of darkness. Amen. The word continues to say, and what accord does Christ with Belial, which is the devil? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? God says you should have no other gods before me. And mm -hmm. don't think it's idols that you prop up and you worship. It is anything that you put before God. Anything that you esteem more than God. Anything that you find that is more important. More than being in the presence of God or doing the things for God. That is an idol. Yeah. And what fellowship does that have with Christ? Mm. Christ is the one that went to the cross. Yes. No one else went to the cross for you. So it should be simple. Yes. It should be simple. Let me tell you. See when the night before Jesus was betrayed. When he was in the garden of Gethsemane. He was praying. And he said God if it is possible. Let this cup pass me because he knew the suffering yeah. he was going to endure. Lord. And he prayed three times because the burden was so much. Mm. But you know what Jesus said after every time he prayed to his father? He said, but not my will, Lord. You see, Jesus was in alignment. Yeah. Jesus was in agreement mm. with the plans of his father. And because of that, what happened to Jesus? Mm. Jesus has a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Because he was able to come in agreement with what his father told him. Despite everything in his body, he wanted not to go to that cross. He said, Father, if it's possible. But he said, not my will. So you see, when we're faced with situation that wants to pull us back mm -hmm. in the darkness, mm -hmm. pray to God and say, God, not my will. Yeah. Not my will, Lord. Help me, Jesus, to do the things that you want me to do. Mm -hmm. It's full time we live this victorious life. Listen, eternal life doesn't start in heaven. It starts the minute you accept Jesus Christ. And you can walk in the victory if you're able to keep yourself separated from the things that God said you must keep yes. yourself from. Yes. Yes. It is simple. Yes. But the devil complicates it because he knows that the flesh is fighting against the spirit. So he brings things that he knows will entice you and because you are so in your flesh, you go to the things that you feel like you should do instead of the things that you 
law God requires you yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. And when he does that, he's yeah. able to rob us. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to be resolute that no longer are you going to be suffering. Think, think about this. Let's put it in the natural again. You have a bank account. And you know that on the first of every month, there is a person that come in your bank account and then take out your money. And every time you change the bank and you get a new account, they keep taking out the money. And you're not doing anything different. You just keep opening bank accounts. And every time you open it, they keep taking it. That is what the devil does. Every time he sets traps for us, he steals a blessing. He delays a blessing. You should be tired of living a victim when we are not victims. We are victorious because of Jesus Christ. Saints of God, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to know that I serve a God that has made me victorious. And the only thing he wants me to do is to come in agreement with him. Whatever he says that I should do, I should do it. No questions asked. And the word continues to say, and I love this one. It says, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Do you know that we're the temple of God? 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17, it says, do you know that you're the temple of God? And that the spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are. That's why it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God in Romans 12, that you present your bodies of a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. For this is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And 2 Corinthians 6, 14-15 continues to say... For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the almighty God. That's the word of the Lord. It is simple. God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We were once far apart and now we have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. Colossians 3, 1 to 3 says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on the things above, not on the things on earth. For you died and your life is hidden in Christ, in God. Just the word of the Lord. So my encouragement, saints of God, is that if the mystery of salvation has been revealed to you, if you understand the cause for us to have this fellowship, for us to have everything that was lost in the Garden of Eden to be restored. If we understand that God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. If we believe all of that. If we believe that we are joint ears with Jesus Christ. If we believe that now we can cry out, Abba, Father. If we believe all of that. Then it is up to us to make sure. That as God is searching for a people, that we will say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. I'm ready to be used by you. I'm ready to bring glory to you. This is what God requires. It's time for us to put the enemy to shame. It's time for us to put him to shame. 
The word of God said to resist the devil. It says submit to God, but resist the devil. And if you resist him, he will flee from you. But if you keep company with him, he will destroy you. Do not accommodate him. And it starts with simple things. If you know you're watching something and you're not supposed to, don't watch it. If you know you're going to go somewhere, you know that if you don't feel, don't go there. If you're having conversations and it's not edifying, don't have it. Those are the ways you're able to resist the devil. And little by little, you'll see that you're coming in alignment with what God wants because it's a lifestyle. It is your everyday walk and talk. That's why the word of God said, broad is the way that leads to destruction and many find it. But narrow is the path and difficult. It is not an easy road. It's a difficult road. But Jesus Christ says that we are more than conquerors. So we're not going to be doing it by ourselves. We just have to have a heart. A willingness. The devil is so willing to destroy. Oh, oh, oh. He is so willing to steal and to keep God's people bound. He is so willing. We need to have more zeal than him. Because God has restored us. And all he wants is a people. He's looking for a people. Mm. He's looking for a people. Yes. And in closing, I'm going to use Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of oh, our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints. What is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever amen heavenly father we praise you heavenly father we worship you and we exalt you and we give you all the glory we thank you god that you love us so much lord that you have done everything that is good for us god help us to stand in the place that you want us to be oh god help us god to come in alignment to come in agreement to come into covenant with every requirement that you have in your word oh god thank you for jesus his sacrifice his love his blood his life that was traded for mine and for ours and for everyone who is in here and who will hear by ear lord we give your praise and we give your glory and I pray, oh God, that your word will go forth and that your hearts of your people will never be the same. Father God, we thank you that you always, you're always, always chasing after us, God. Surely your goodness and your mercy will continue to follow us, oh God, all the days of our lives and we will dwell in your house, oh God, forever forever. 